What brought you here? The clickbait. The clickbait always brings you. And what is up with that clickbait? Well, I did in fact chase an F-15 from Illinois all the way over into St. Louis to the Boeing factory so that that aircraft could be put back together. Hey Fearless Mods fans, what is up? It's Biff. And we are not in the Fearless Mods garage. Nope, this time we're coming to you from an undisclosed location where I have to confess to you something that many of you maybe don't know. And that is, I'm not a full-time YouTuber. Perhaps you could tell that by the lack of subscribers that I have after serving over 26 years in the Air Force, primarily flying, I went back after retirement to an engineering job continuing to support the Air Force and I'm an engineer for the F-15 fighter. Being an engineer from both a pilot and an engineering perspective actually is an interesting melding of those two worlds because I can relate to a lot of the engineering changes and thought processes that we have from a pilot perspective and I can relate to a lot of the pilot issues that we may be having from an engineering perspective. And so bringing those two worlds together makes this a very rewarding and exciting career that I am thrilled with. No danger of me quitting that anytime soon and pursuing full-time YouTube until maybe you guys take me up to the million sub mark. That's gonna be a while. And so what you see here is a lot of time lapse of us walking through the process, but the main problem was getting that entire fuselage on a flatbed and bringing it back nearly 40 miles through two states across the Mississippi River and into St. Louis through traffic and all the other things that would confront us as we did this effort. Let's just say that this airplane has seen better days. It's clearly in an unflyable condition, but it is not a loss and because of that, we have the ability to put it back together and make it as good as new. I was primarily in charge of organizing that whole effort. The first thing we did is we bring it into the hangar. We have a dedicated team of individuals background in disassembling F-15s for this specific purpose. And you can see how they go through the process of removing the horizontal stabilizers and then removing the wings, pulling them away from the aircraft, setting them down. This was all done really in a matter of days but because of having to schedule the crane in between to come in and do the loading operations, uh, it did get spread out uh, nearly two weeks worth of effort to do this whole thing. Quite surprising when you consider that this is such a huge structural invasion of this aircraft. We load those onto the support fixtures. They get loaded on the flatbeds, the flatbeds go away. And now the fuselage is sitting on the gear. We throw some jacks under it and we have to raise the gear because when it goes on the flatbed, our primary concern is the height of those vertical stabilizers, which we did not remove. And we had about a 17 foot height limit that we would be allowed to travel with when we transported this thing. We had special fixtures made, which once we raise the aircraft up with the crane, we slide the support fixtures in from the front and the rear. We set the aircraft down into the attitude that it will be sitting on the trailer and then utilizing a couple of forklifts and the crane in unison, we maintain that pitch attitude of the aircraft as we raise it up, the trailer backs underneath it and we set it down. And then we took several measurements because we had to get that tail down. We were essentially at 17.4 and in order to lower it those extra four inches, it's merely a fulcrum. And by raising the front about twice that amount allowed us to get those four inches down and we would be able to transport across multiple states and meet all of the certificate uh, requirements that they had imposed for the municipalities, for the state police, the department of highway transportation, uh, all of those different entities uh, had to clear this for the entire route. The 
The team that actually did the hauling of the aircraft, they use a lead truck that has a boom on the front of it. They also used a boom with a 3D imaging device so that they could get a 3D image of the entire route and ensure that they could clear all of the different obstacles along the way. There are some challenges associated with that because not everything is 17 feet clearable. Once we had the aircraft trailered and outside of the hangar, it was a matter of waiting for those permits to come through and the day they did, it was go time. You can see right here that the Stinger, in fact, is in chase of this F-15 and we chased it right across the airfield. Across active runways, you can see an Allegiant airline taking off right in front of us before we cross the active. The main reason we took this route was so that we wouldn't have to be confronted with as many city structures that we would have to clear getting from the hangar out to the main highways. Going across the airfield to this opposite exit allowed us the ability to get onto the highways without uh, quite as many obstacles along the way. So what's interesting right here is even though the tails are at 17 feet, they're putting PVC pipes on the tops of both of them, extending them forward and then pulling them down and tying them off so that it gives more like a 14 foot height at the front of those tips in case there's anything such as a low hanging wire. Pretty interesting I say because the first time I had seen this was in 2009-10 in Iraq where the MRAPs had PVC pipes on them, as you can see in the inset, and those were for that specific purpose. If they didn't see them, those pipes would take that wire up and over, not only the, the vehicle, but anybody who might have had their head sticking up out the top. At that point, in broad daylight, we're escorting this massive oversized load through miles and miles, primarily of countryside. But countryside takes you through little towns, and little towns have things like stoplights, sharp turns, and even Christmas decorations that had to be accounted for. You can have tree limbs hanging out into the road, and all kinds of different obstacles that the team was aware of and as, as they coordinated from front to back over radio, they were able to coach the driver on recommended actions that he should take if something were occurring such as the boom on the lead truck happened to tap a sign or a pole or a wire. You might find it interesting that it is loaded in reverse with the tails pointing forward and the nose pointing aft and that was intentional because that gives the driver much more maneuverability to adjust those vertical stabilizers. With a quick turn that otherwise would be way delayed if it had to wait for the back of the trailer to adjust. Not to mention he has much more control over where they go versus back here where they're just kind of in follow mode. I fast forward through a lot of this because it's just time lapse driving through through open country um, and even some of the little towns and, and lights, it, it gets pretty repetitive, but it requires some skillful driving as well along the way to make sure that you clear any obstacles. From the get-go, we had the Illinois State Patrol that was escorting us. Once we crossed that bridge over into Missouri, there was a little bit of a lag before we got to any more police officer escorts because the the Missouri State Patrol weren't involved. It, they left it up to the municipalities and each one of those had a, uh, a lack of awareness that the orange car behind the Ford was actually part of the escort team. We're able to rectify that with at least one of the municipalities, but as soon as we leave that one and we get to the next one, it's back to the same old thing. At a certain point when they stopped to make an adjustment to those booms they had installed on the vertical stabs, we were able to grab a radio and then you can start hearing some of the communications, which is pretty interesting how they coordinate amongst themselves to essentially orchestrate this movement from A to B. It was quite fun to be in the Stinger uh, as a part of this chase team. The color of the car obviously screams highway department or Home Depot, one or the other, but because we were driving tucked in tight with the oversized load um, trucks, 
and all of their lights and the police escort. It was very clear that we were part of the escorting team here. It did seem like once we got into Missouri, we were dealing with a lot more of these wires, uh, whereas in Illinois, those teams weren't having to do a whole lot. Once we got on the Missouri side, they were leapfrogging each other and the, the whole escort team and constantly raising wires either with the bucket um, or with a pole, sometimes a couple of guys to get them up over those tails. And there's even a couple instances, at least one, where the uh, where one of the little wires just kind of rides up over the PVC pipes and drops back down. About three inches that wire. That one Ford that we're primarily following the whole time, her job is to protect the power line teams that are raising the lines that aren't high enough until the aircraft passes underneath them. Then they lower them and she provides protection to them until they're able to get back in the vehicle and catch back up with the rest of the team. And not only that, but get in front of them so they're ready for the next lines. Um, so we would hang back and try to help her block traffic, which would be very difficult on multiple lanes with one vehicle. Um, but with multiple vehicles, we could adequately do that. And she was very thankful to have us as part of the team for that reason. Even though a lot of the different cops weren't sure who was part of the party, it wasn't super obvious that we were. Thanks, Lisa. So that we could try to make it very clear that we were part of that escort team. Uh, I would stay tight on the police, giving him room to be able to move left and right if he needed to, until it came time to get through some of the lights. And at that point, I would just get beside him and just run through the red light with him. I probably ran a couple dozen lights with the cops right beside me. Certainly weren't speeding, going well below speed limit, but running the stop lights was definitely something that uh, you do when you're performing an escort and trying to um, ensure clearances and, and also trying to hold off all the people that are behind. For some of these where we're heading down underneath the traffic light poles, um, they were making me a little bit uncomfortable from my vantage point because I was seeing very small clearances between the vertical tails and some of those solid structures and I didn't want my baby getting bent. So what you're hearing throughout most of all this is the red truck up ahead, he'll zig left and right and get views so he can see where he's gonna cross under those traffic lights and the signs that are hanging on them.
So even though we started this effort at around nine o'clock in the morning, what would normally be about a 35, 40 minute drive and the route that they ended up taking and the speed that we were and all of the efforts that had to go into clearing wires and, and zigzagging intersections amounted to about a three hour, 15 minute trip to get across there. So therefore you can tell uh, we were right at lunchtime, which was not the best timing to be coming into the city as far as traffic is concerned. We were even getting people that were trying to tag along behind the team, but the cops weren't concerning themselves with that. What they were concerned about is managing the escort team. Okay, so once we got the aircraft to the facility, then became the interesting part of removing it from the trailer. It was hard enough taking it up off of the jacks with two forklifts and a crane, but then to take it off the trailer and set it back down onto those three jack points was going to be impossible. So what the team decided to do was to raise the aircraft up, Safety would not allow them to get under it while it was raised up, so before they did that, they connected all the hydraulic lines that they would need to to be able to lower the gear. The other challenge that they had to overcome was the nose down pitch that we had while we were hoisting it without any weights on the rear of the aircraft. Uh, we tried a method that did not work so well, so what they did was they actually hung weights directly from the aircraft itself so that when the aircraft lifted up, their calculations were spot on and the thing raised up perfectly level. So then once it was raised up, they were able to lower the gear. Once the gear was down and locked, they were able to set the aircraft down, go in and pin it, and then it was all good. It was just a matter of towing it back into the facility. And that's mission complete. So now that the aircraft is safely at its home back in St. Louis, my job is done. This airplane has been my baby here locally. I've been babysitting it for about six to eight months to make sure that while it was in outdoor storage that we weren't letting any uh, rodents or wasps or other insects or birds come in and create their homes in the aircraft. And we did a fairly good job of doing that by sailing it up and preventing that from happening. It weathered rain, it weathered very strong thunderstorms. Um, I don't think it had to weather any snow, thank goodness, but we were really close before we got it taken back over there. Fearless Mods fans, I hope you enjoyed this little bit of a different look. We did use the Stinger. The Stinger was a great chase car, um, but it certainly was uh, an exciting end to a long project. It was mostly about relationships and working with people so that we could get all these different teams together and make this happen. It certainly was a fitting into a very rewarding and long project and all that remains now is uh, putting it back together so not my problem but anyway guys thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed this little bit of a different uh, twist from the fearless mods garage uh, if you like it please reach down there like and subscribe you never know what you're gonna get from this channel but uh, appreciate you coming around and we'll catch you again real soon take care